What you're looking at is the cemetery that's on the property that I bought this year with my business partner. It is known as the Allen Teeter Road Cemetery or the Hayward Ravensburg Farm Cemetery. The oldest grave on it is from 1794 and the last grave on it is from 1901. And in this video, me and Wade Fowler are going to restore two graves. We spent a lot of time restoring a lot of graves, but in this video, you're just going to see these two. On the left is Phineas Canfield, and on the right is his dad, John Canfield. And this is the condition of the two gravestones when we started. You could see the Phineas stone has been leaning on the John stone for many, many years with lots of missing parts. Sure, I want to just see what's here, and then yeah. from that, because that might give you a project. We need more of those. Yeah. I think, did you say this is the oldest? It's, it's one of the or oldest one of the ones oldest? I could find. Uh, but, you know, every time I come here, I, I discover something laying in the grass, something face down that I didn't realize, and I flip it over, and they're all very, very old. This one is 1796. He died May of 1796, John Canfield. And this also says Canfield on it, so this must be the Canfield plot. Guys, I want to introduce to you Wade Fowler, the millennial stone cleaner. Wade came to visit me. I found him on Instagram. He came over right away, responded right to my messages, and he's put out a very intensive video on what we did here. And in this case, we picked up John Canfield's stone, pulled it out of the ground, and we got it righted up level with the earth. You could still see that severe stain from Phineas's stone leaning on it. After doing some research, I found several pictures online that showed that the Phineas stone was just to the left of the John stone. And we did some digging right beside it, and lo and behold, we found all the missing parts buried deep in the ground. And uh, sometime between 1980 and current day, the corner got broken off and it got leaned on John stone. And that's how I found it when I got the house. The staining on it is probably 30 years old, at the very least. And here's a picture from 1980 that I found on findagrave.com and also found this picture on Find a Grave where you see the Phineas Stone with the corner intact just to the left from 1980. But Phineas's stone was broken in half. There was a jagged edge, which you'll see when we pull it up and show you. And we had a sneaking suspicion that right where it's shown in the picture was the broken parts. That's exactly where we found them. Going all the way back to when I started YouTube as just a side hustle trying to build up a bit more of a business, I owe all of my success to social media. As one of the questions that I keep getting asked is how do you get started? It is such a constant question that some big creators, colleague, friends of mine, have put together the creator course that outlines a step-by-step -step guide to building a business on YouTube and social media. There is Cam from Blacktail Studios, Chris from Four Eyes Furniture, John from Lincoln Street Woodworks, Sam from DIY Huntress, Brad from Fix This, Build That, and of course myself, where I will be doing a bonus live where I will be sharing the filming, editing, and all of the gear that I use to create content. At over four plus hours long with live coaching sessions, the goal at the end of this is that everyone should be able to generate at least $1,000 a month from your social media side hustle. But if you want to join us, the doors for enrollment will be closing this Saturday, October 29th at midnight. So please click the link in the description of the video and we will see you there. In this video framing, you see the John Canfield stone is on the left side because we're facing the back of it, way to just ride it up and we put gravel around it to keep it upright. Now we're digging here. This is where we had the sneaking suspicion that we were going to find the loose parts. And as we dug down, we started finding parts and we had a suspicion that it could have been a keystone. A stone, a keystone is a, a big stone where the actual tombstone sits in to kind of give it a foundation. But in this case, they were broken jagged edges and you could see them there. They were settled in there for years. Those pictures from 1980 show a half of a stone sticking out of the ground. And I would only imagine most people had no idea that it was a half a stone. Somewhere along the way it broke in half. And these are the two smaller pieces that we found in the grass, which obviously were broken off in more recent times. And then as we yanked parts out of the ground, we began to see the font on them and we knew exactly what they were. There was two broken pieces, so it might have snapped and then went in the ground and then snapped again over the many, many years. And now here I have all the parts 
to be able to reassemble this stone. Now you see over the years many people reassemble stones with big gooey epoxy which looks horrible and I'm going to confess I did use epoxy but I made sure it didn't show anywhere on the front of the stone. Now those are all the parts married together again found deep in the earth. You could see the staining line on the whitest piece at the very bottom. That's where it was in the ground all this time and those other four pieces were basically buried in the ground right beneath it. Fairly deep too. They were all upright and you could see how big they are. And now here we are in my shop. I began by pinning them together. These are the two broken pieces that were the basically the left ear lobe of the stone. And here I am mixing up some total boat epoxy. This is four minute epoxy to glue those pins together. Now I figured I'd let those two pieces get nice and securely fastened together. Now here I'm using thick sew to epoxy these two parts together. I started gluing them together in pieces. Each time I glued a piece together I let it wait for about a day. And now here I am thick sew setting that piece that so-called left earlobe into place. Now one thing that's interesting you'll notice how stained up the stones are. Now here again gluing that other piece. Now this grave was installed in the 18 in 1800. That's when the date is on this grave. I wanted to make extra sure none of the epoxy was going to show on the front. Wade gave me some ointment. It's a it's like a cleaning solution that gets rid of algae and moss, but it takes a long time. So you'll notice in the beginning of the video while we're working on them everything's black. By the end of the video because it's a few months after, everything is white. This algae remover takes a long time. You you dilute it with water and you spray it on and it takes a long time for it to do its business but eventually you'll notice the beginning of the video all the stones are black by the end of the video most of the stones are much lighter because the algae remover is working over time I have quarter inch by two inch stainless steel extrusion I got it online but I made sure I use stainless steel TIG rod and stainless steel material everywhere now you see I built up the epoxy on all the back joints but nothing on the front. No epoxy shows through the front. I kind of considered what would a museum do and uh, honestly a museum probably wouldn't use epoxy but I was having a hard time keeping it together while I was trying to assemble it. And in this case I did all this structure strapping on the back because I figured it's better to have at least that ugly back than the whole thing laying in pieces buried deep beneath the ground. It is the lesser of two evils, in my personal opinion. Now, I come to realize we all thought this might have been the wife because we couldn't really read the name. But then once we began to read the name, we realized it's Phineas. Phineas is the son of John Canfield. And he was born in 1753 uh, on April 10th. And he died 1800, May 13th, at 47 years old. And he took part in the Battle of Lexington during the American Revolutionary War. And it didn't say that on his stone, which I found interesting. There is an inscription at the very bottom, which was at the very bottom of the piece buried in the ground. And it was, it's nearly impossible to read it. So I wasn't able to even figure out what that inscription says. I wonder if it had something to do with his war service. Now here I'm gluing the framework on and I have another trick up my sleeve to keep the framework in place. And I'm going to bury it too. So I do some framework beneath the surface of the earth. My little rooster will not stop. He's going to get punted into the street. And in this case, you'll see these holes along the side framework. I wanted, obviously, as little as possible to show from the front. So what you see is just the quarter inch edge, if you're looking directly at it. And now I'm just, I did a little marker so I know how deep my pegs are. I'm going to weld stainless steel pegs into those holes and that's just going to keep each one of those pieces in place with the framework if the epoxy begins to let go from rain and snow and ice the pieces will still be held in place now i i put epoxy between the two big pieces uh the two little pieces are pinned together and there's epoxy between the the, the left and right sections and they're puzzled together, so they're still held in the framework. So if the epoxy was to give up, I'm pretty sure it would stay in place. Now I TIG weld the ends of those plugs that go into the 
the stonework only about a quarter of an inch. I don't want to go too deep and then create a crevice for ice to form and crack it again. Perfectly honest, in the next hundred years, it probably will happen again. But I uh, try to do the least amount of damage that I could think of. You can see that inscription at the very bottom, which is completely faded away. And I clean up the stainless. I get it polished. And now here we are at the grave site. Rob Rojas is helping me. And this was incredibly heavy. This probably weighs 200 pounds. And it's thicker at the bottom. What's interesting is you see how the random shape is at the bottom. Most likely this stone broke because it fell over, because it didn't have a deep bottom. I dug deeper and deeper looking for any other sections that might become part of that longer bottom. And there was nothing there. It seemed like it was the way it was made. Now here we are putting it right beside his dad, where it was in the pictures, and leveling it up with some stonework underneath it. And as per Wade's direction, we're putting gravel all around it. Now this is several months after Wade was there. This is about two months after Wade was there. Using that big bucket as a tamping bucket. There wasn't much information I could find online on, on John Canfield, other than the fact that, and this is something that I've known, John was born in Milford, Connecticut in 1724, and he died in East Durham in May of 1796. There was a big exodus from Connecticut to East Durham in and around that time. A lot of the people buried here were born in Connecticut, which is really interesting. And there you see those stones, and this was, even since this, they've lightened up some. Now this is a couple days ago, and you can see how light those stones are, are becoming. And there you see a picture from 1980. I hope you enjoyed this. You definitely head over to Wade's channel. He does a very deep dive, his videos over 30 minutes long on several of the gravestones that we restored. I have lots more video and footage that I'm going to put together. Thank you for watching.